Cool. Uh, well, hopefully some of these operators can make a slick exit in Connecticut because cannabis license sales is an exit strategy in Connecticut's expanding market. As Connecticut's adult use cannabis market approaches its second anniversary, the industry is seeing a notable increase in merger and acquisition activity. Many companies upon reaching the final licensure stage are evaluating whether to launch their businesses or sell their licenses, a strategy permitted under regulations, albeit with certain restrictions. For instance, White Oak Bridge, a cannabis transport company, purchased its transport license from NMB BPT LLC. NMB initially acquired this license through a lottery, but chose to sell it instead of pursuing business operations. White Oak Bridge aims to vertically integrate its operations in Connecticut, a strategy increasingly adopted by other companies in the state. This trend is fueled by the numerous challenges cannabis startups face, such as stringent regulatory processes, limited capital, and tough economic conditions. Meanwhile, companies like Still River Wellness are considering various strategies regarding delivery service licenses. They are, they are deliberating whether to start their own delivery operations or partner with an existing licensee or acquire licenses. Similarly, Nova Farms, a Massachusetts-based cannabis company, is actively acquiring licenses to expand its operations. Nova Farms recently secured a $20 million investment to enhance its presence in the Northeast and is expanding exploring further acquisitions in Connecticut. However, not all licenses can easily be transferred. Social equity license holders must maintain at least 50% ownership for seven years before selling their equity. Non-social equity owners can sell their licenses after receiving final licensure, but they cannot add new backers between the initial application and final approval stages. According to the State Department of Consumer Protection, 63 adult use cannabis businesses have received full licensure, while 82 remain in the provisional stage. While the state does not track license transfer statistics, industry experts predict increased M&A activity as Connecticut's market matures. Several factors drive the sale of licenses, including the desire for quick financial returns and the high costs associated with operating a cannabis business. The cannabis industry is notably capital intensive and recent trends indicate the de a decrease in investment from large corporations. As the industry matures, potential buyers and sellers often face challenges in agreeing on valuations, especially in Connecticut's nascent market. M&A deals in the cannabis sector witnessed a significant decline in 2023 compared to previous years. However, 2024 saw so signs of recovery with approximately 40 transactions completed so far, valued at $313.44 million. Experts emphasize the importance of thorough due diligence in these transactions, which involves analyzing profit margins, financial records, competitive landscapes, and regulatory compliance. Overall, Connecticut's cannabis market is undergoing a period of consolidation with license sales emerging as viable exit strategy for some businesses. As the market continues to evolve, companies are strategically navigating these complex dynamics to secure their positions and capitalize on emerging opportunities. So this is something that we see happening in all markets, especially as they mature. Um, I don't buy that um, the capital requirement is why they're they're looking for an exit strategy the people who are winning winning licenses and lotteries and then immediately flipping them is what they won them for they were looking for this burn and turn opportunity which i think is unfortunate for those that lost that we're really looking forward especially on the social equity side of coming in and taking advantage of being able to operate in a licensed regulated market um, I also think it's interesting that they're not allowed to take on new backers during the licensure process. That doesn't mean they don't. That means they don't report it to the state, which actually opens up the avenue for more people to come in who shouldn't be investing in cannabis companies and more kind of secretive shell game kind of structure. So I don't know. I think it's interesting. I do. I, I don't know. We're going to see what happens. I'm sure this was a, was a huge play and was the plan to begin with. But if you're just getting a license to flip it, just bow out and let someone else do it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I, 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 I do agree with you, Jenny Beth, that them uh, not, not allowing uh, for these uh, partners or these uh, individuals to be able to, 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 to sell or bring on other different partners just only creates a, a bigger problem because they ultimately are going to need the capital one way or another because just because it says something doesn't mean that they don't, they're not going to need the money to continue. So this. It's, 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 it's a restriction yeah. on commerce in a way that's hard to justify um, to say you can't bring on capital partners during that uh, process. 
is 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 not doesn't support an industry so that's so capital mm -hmm. intensive, especially when people budget for what they think they need, and then something comes out of left field, and then they need more money. And so a lot of, a lot of companies, as they scale, raising money is a full time job as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know CEOs that are hired based on their track record of raising money. I love to disagree, and so where I will disagree with Jenny is the idea that. Uh, a, a creating the value of the license, the entitlements, and then flipping it uh, is unfair. I think it's very fair. I think there's a lot of value that's created by taking something that's uncertain opportunity and creating a measure of certainty. And I'm not mad at anybody for exiting at any time because if they're making money or they've done their primary purpose and never wanted to be in ops and was only in standing up the initial portions of a business, I don't have any heartburn about people selling whenever they want. I'm going to fight with you, Yarrow, because the people that do that by and large are not social equity operators that actually want to operate or even knew they had social equity status. They're probably someone that got a phone call from some douchebag who puts these collectives together. And he's like, did you know that you can get a social equity license? They use these people as a figurehead, put them into the lottery, win these places, and other people who actually deserve restorative justice opportunities through these programs don't get them because Chad Brad Thad got Tyrone to get a license so they could sell it immediately. Mm -hmm. Right there is the joy of capitalism. How those with capital, I don't exploit the rules. Is it? Is it I think. Oh. I think it's more just bad, bad, bad policy and bad regulations. Uh, it, it's basically if you're going to allow people with capital to make the rules, uh, that's what they'll do. They'll find the loopholes. Mm. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm. I mean, there's no perfect program. There's not going to be a perfect program. We don't see any social equity programs that truly, 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 truly work. We don't see any cannabis regulations that are truly, truly long term working in all aspects of the bills. Right. Mm. So social I mean, equity I programs like, like, don't work, Jenny, that. because they included people who are not historically disadvantaged and got in trouble because of their avarice and i know several of them they're my friends and it's all good right. but it's like it just went huge until you got busted you shouldn't get a social equity program there was a point at a hall of flowers i was joking with three different founders of of three of the largest companies in california about we should have like a tony robbins style uh uh conference of like how to get big in the Wii game it's like okay so first a thousand pounds of texas second like three to five federal and then third, like, get your funding and get a huge weed company. <laughs> and that's, that shouldn't be the purpose of the social equity purpose. But I think even farther beyond that, cannabis shouldn't really be the nexus or the locus for, for re-engineering society. It provide an inspiration. The regular government should be providing these social equity programs. Uh, the, the issue, uh, you know, from the Republican side is Republicans call those entitlements. All social equity programs are considered entitlements and are cut off because you want to live in this corporate fascist kind of like libertarian nightmare where, wherein we really actually need social programs. And I challenge anybody who says they're a libertarian, like these roads, well, you're in, you're partaking in a socialist program. Flush your toilet into the sewer, you're a socialist. And so I think we need to what? dress society and create equity, creating educational and other opportunities for people who have been denied them. And the sooner we can just get real with history of like, yo, some people kind of like stole everything and, and still have it. Like, we don't want to cut their heads off. We just want to talk to them about sharing enough of it that we can all live inside and eat food. Right. Mm -hmm. Again, I do a lot of drugs, you guys, so I'm probably off base. <laughs> no, you're, I mean, I, you listen, some of that I was like, hold on, carry the two. Let me stay on track of what St. Germain's saying. Oh, but God. I actually, intrinsically, at the end of everything, except for the little socialist pieces, I do agree with you. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that Whoa. it's unfortunate that we... Well, I agree with a lot of things that he said. Mm -hmm. Not all of them. Mm -hmm. We won't dissect them because we're not here to fight. Mm -hmm. It's 10.02, so I might as well keep it rolling. But, uh, you know, I think that a lot of good points were made there. And I, it's really unfortunate. I think that these social equity licenses should not be able to be bought and traded like that. Um, I think we need to change the qualifications on which we determine social equity. Um, I don't think it should be race based, which it's not, but that just opens up immediate litigation. So let's just see what happens. But Connecticut, I, I, let's let's be real, how much true equity is really happening in a, in Connecticut? And I'd love to see how many hedge funds have bought and flipped these licenses, won a lottery. You know, I I personally, just before we move on, 
ha uh, have have been very involved in some little local controversy around what are qualifications and who is most deserving. And mm -hmm. what I have found in the social equity communities, at least local, is it's very much a crabs in the barrel. Instead of people trying to grow these programs and get more funding, there's a lot of uh, uh, stick poking into other people's eyes around, well, who's more deserving, who's who's less deserving. And 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 I, I want to disagree with Matthew St. Germain on something around the idea that those who took oversized risks uh, maybe shouldn't qualify for what we forget is that you know brownie mary needed to get her biomass from someplace mm -hmm. you know the, the, the people in the medical per, uh, perspective if there weren't people who had a had a had a, had a malformed risk to reward ratio and weren't taking those big risks that medical program in California over 30 years wouldn't have became the beginnings of what now, you know, adult use is. And so I think that we don't need to uh, we don't need to um, make heroes out of those who took risks. But I also think that I've seen in some of these forums and, uh, you know, this idea that, you know, some people who shouldn't deserve social equity. Uh, are are benefiting from the social equity programs merely because they decided to take oversized risks. Those oversized risks, in my mind, built the medical programs, at least in this state. The other thing that I think is really interesting is people need to understand social equity is not reparations. And yeah. if we're going to talk about yeah. communities most d impacted yeah. by prohibition, prohibition, it is not enough no. to just talk about race no. because there would be no, no. Medical, medical cannabis no. in California if there weren't gay men dying from AIDS. And a lot of those gay men no. were not black or brown or indigenous. And so we I have to understand that some of these communities were um, um, marginalized communities, mm -hmm. but also because of who they chose to love, not because of the color of their skin and that immutable characteristic.